page, fill in the blank with no word game. And then the next page will be multiple choice. And then the last like four or five pages. Where All right, y'all. Let's uh, get started. I think I got everybody here, y'all. Just double check when you leave. Um, so, we to look at old exams and just sort of work through some practice problems. Is that okay? I thought we had looked more at the older stuff that we've been doing. Unless y'all want to do particular things. Like the, the chapter 2 stuff that we were doing. Finding potential, potential energy. I like chapter 2. You like it now, right? Uh, relating potential and uh, an electric field. So this was the spring 19 exam. And then right. Um, and some of the exam ones are going to be on the exam come Monday. So make sure that you're looking at exam ones. And also some of this stuff about potential will probably be in the free response. So the potential at point A, these type of problems, which you'll have, I think that everybody's pretty good on these. Oh. <laughs> the potential at point A, I think that everybody's pretty good on these, where I give you a figure with some charges and you have to figure out what is the potential. You just go through it quickly. So if I have a point right here and I want to know the potential, I have the potential due to that charge and the potential due to that charge. Uh, so potential is KQ over R. Remember, it's a scalar quantity. So whenever you're dealing with scalar quantities, you include the sign of the charge. Uh, so in this case, I'll have a 9 times 10 to the ninth, doing the 25 nanocoulomb first. Negative 25 times 10 to the minus 9, divided by the distance. This is 5 meters, divided by 5 meters, and then plus 9 times 10 to the ninth. Um, 9 times 10 to the minus 9 divided by the distance, which was 3 meters, right here. And then I can do some cancellations here. That cancels, cancels, that goes away, that goes away, that goes away and leaves 3 right there. This goes away and leaves 5 right there. So I'm left with minus 45 plus 27, which is minus 18 volts. So you'll have a problem like that, where I give you two or three charges, and I ask you what is the potential due to those charges, OK? Um, and then I'll also ask, let's see, well, let's look at some others. There's one number four there, but let's let's go look at some similar ones. That clear this, y'all? Um, so let's go back a little bit later, say spring 18. So now looking at spring 18, I have to sort of go down a little bit. Um, past the electric fields. Okay, so let's look at number 22. Here, membrane walls of living cells are surprisingly large electric fields. And then I tell you the electric field strength, and I want to know what is the voltage across this cell membrane. So when you talk about uh, cells, you can have voltages across the cell membrane. Gosh, what is that called? Uh, like your action potential, you know, we talk about this in your biology classes. I don't know if this is the same, but that's the little bit of biology that I know. I know action potential. So if I have an electric field strength, so my electric field strength here is 4 times 10 to the 6. It's a very large electric field. I gave you the units here in volts per meter. That's not our normal units for electric field. Usually it's newtons per coulomb. But I gave it here just to clue you in on how you work this problem. Because if I want to know the voltage, you can just look at the units and say, well, if I multiply that electric field by a distance, then that'll give me a voltage. And in fact, that's true. If you look at your um, at your equation sheet, then the uh, the voltage is equal to E x delta x. So if I want to know the potential, I can just take the product of the electric field and the distance. So x here is uh, 5 nanometers, 5 times 10 to the minus 9. If I take the product of those, it's going to be 20 times 10 to the minus 3. That's in volts. I just multiplied these two numbers. 5 times 4 is 20. 10 to the minus 9 times 10 to the 6 is 10 to the minus 3. So that's 0.02 volts. You'll probably have a question like that. It might be in the free response. I haven't figured out exactly what the free response is going to be. But uh, it, it could be something like that. If not, it'll be in the multiple choice. Okay? I'll take that away. The other type of problem that you'll see 
is the energy problems where you, I give you a configuration of charges. Oh, it doesn't look like I gave you one here. Oh, let's do number 24 there. I think we did one similar to this, number 24, where I give you a, uh, this is a map of equal potential lines. Let me zoom in a little bit so y'all can see. So I give you this map of equal potential lines. And first of all, I want to know if I release a proton at part B, where does it move? So I have a proton right here, and I want to know which direction does it move. So you, remember, if I'm talking about protons, I drew this figure. If I have a mountain, if I have a proton, a proton is going to move down the mountain, but an electron will move up the mountain. Electrons just sort of do the opposite of what you think. Or if, so that this would be high potential, low potential. Or I always draw my two plates like this to help me remember which way protons and electrons move. Do they move from high to low or low to high potential? This is my positive, that's my negative. This is my high potential, high V. This is my low potential, low V. And if I put a positive charge there, it's going to move in that direction because it'll be repelled from the positive charges. And a negative charge, on the other hand, will move from low to high. So here, if I have a proton at part B, it's going to sort of roll downhill, so to speak. So it's going to move which direction? Towards C or towards A? It's going to move towards A. All right. And it's going to experience a delta V of uh, moving towards A. Actually, no, I'm sorry. I'm moving, moving on to number 25. So in this previous figure, let's forget the delta V there. In this previous figure, if I'm moving from line A to line C, so this time I have a, an electron that's moving from here all the way up to here, and I want to know what is the speed that it travels, what is the speed that it attains. You'll definitely have a problem where you have a charge that moves through a potential difference, and I ask you something about its energy. In this case, it's kinetic energy. So an electron that moves through a potential difference, in this case, of 30 minus 10, it moves through a potential difference of 20 volts. And I want to know now what speed has it attained it moving in that direction, right? This would be like my electron right here moving in that direction and it speeds up. That's going to be, um, well, potential, remember, is energy per charge. So if I want to know the kinetic energy, it's going to be V times Q which is going to be uh, 20 volts. Uh, what's my charge? It's an electron, so it has the fundamental unit of charge, 1.6 times 10 to the minus 19 coulombs. That's uh, 32, or 320 times 10 to the minus 19 coulombs. No, I'm sorry, thir 32. It's 32 times 10 to the minus 19. And then I can take that value. Uh, that's not coulombs, I'm sorry. That's in joules. I can take that value and figure out the velocity. So I say 32 times 10 to the minus 19. 19 joules is equal to 1 half mv squared. And I would solve that for v. Now, because it's a proton or an electron, I know what the mass is. So anytime you're working a problem, look for those key words like proton or electron, and then that'll tell you both what the charge and the mass is. Often students miss problems just because they miss that information, that there's a lot in that word. And so the mass of an electron, uh, it's on your equation sheet. Is it 9.11 times 10 to the minus 31 kilograms? So I can put in that mass and I can calculate whatever the velocity is. Okay? I'll need you to do that. You'll see a problem like that, where you have a charge move across a potential difference, and then you have to figure out what is the velocity of that particle. Okay? Uh, one more class of problems. Can I get rid of this? Yeah? Okay. Let me show you one. I didn't see one on this exam, but we'll go back another year. This is 2017. Okay, this was a simpler problem, but here in number 22, this is 2017. Um, 
I want to know what is the potential energy that is contained. The first question I ask is what is the potential? And that's just like the one that we did before. To find that potential, it's kq over r. I add that up for both particles. For the next one, I need to find the potential energy. And the potential energy is kqq over r. In this case, I only have one pair of charges. So all I have to do is take the product of these two charges times k and then divide by the distance. So I have uh, 9 times 10 to the ninth. Q is 4 times 10 to the minus 9. 32 times 10 to the minus 9 divided by the distance, which is this distance. Uh, that's the square root of 2 squared plus 2 squared. So it's the square root of 8 or 2 root 2. Okay, I just found that distance, um, which is going to be the square root of 4 plus 4. And then that would be my potential energy of that configuration of charges. Remember, guys, if there was three charges, if I had three charges, I would have to find the potential energy of these two charges, these two charges, and these two charges, every configuration of possible pairs that I could have and calculate the potential energy for each of those. And then the total potential energy would be the sum of those three values. I won't give you four particles. Okay? That's it sort of from chapter one. Those are the different types of problems that you'll see. I would look back at the uh, concept test too, that those are good indicators. And of course, look at the old exams. Um, any particular questions coming up? You wanna do some circuits? Is that okay? Those are another big part of the exam. Let's see if we got any here. No. Looks like these are mostly on exam twos. Uh, we'll do spring 18 exam two. Okay, so number four and five on spring 18. A good example of a problem that you'll have. Uh, I'll tell you more later in the week about the free response, but this could be similar to one of those or probably a little more complicated than this, kind of like the ones that we did in class on the free response. But I'll let you know more about that as we get closer. Um, so first, I want to find the equivalent capacitance. You think you can do this sort of just looking at it without really writing anything down? Think about it for just a few seconds. You're going to start with the three and six in series. It's going to be a series of four and four. Right, what's four and four? And uh, I mean, top of my head, I don't know. <laughs> okay, it's two. Right, yeah. yeah. Okay, good. So, but you don't have to be able to do it in your head like that. But with more practice, you will eventually be able to get it. Uh, these two in series are two microfarads. Right, a three and a six in series, that's one over, one over a third, one over three plus one over six is equal to two. And then you have a two and a two in parallel, that's equal to four microfarads. And then you're left with a four and a four in series. With 12 volts. And so a four and four in series is one over a quarter plus a quarter. That's one over a half. That's what you were thinking, right? Uh, which is equal to two. So that's our answer there. And then I want to know the voltage across the two microfarad capacitors. I want to know the voltage across this capacitor right here. You can sort of step back. I know that these two have to have six volts and six volts. Remember, they're only identical because the capacitors are identical. And they split up the voltage here, the 12 volts, they split it up evenly. But only because these are identical capacitors. That's a scenario that you'll probably encounter in identical capacitors. You'll probably also encounter two dissimilar capacitors. And if you have two dissimilar capacitors, well, we'll come back to that in a second. Um, so I have six volts and six volts. That means that I have six volts across this capacitor. And I have six volts across this whole thing right here, this big parallel branch. So can you tell me then what is the voltage across the two microfarad? Six volts. 
it's going to be six volts. Very good. Right. That's going to be six volts because it's one of those parallel branches, and there are no other capacitors in that in this branch with a two microfarad capacitor that it splits up the voltage with. So it would be four on three microfarads. That's exactly right. Yeah. So I'd have four volts here and two volts here. Very good. Remember that small capacitors have big voltages. And because that capacitor is half the 6, then I know it's going to have twice the voltage as the 6 microfarad. If you don't understand where that's coming from, like I understand not everybody sees that, uh, the way that you would do it, let's just look at, at this part right now. I have a 3 and a 6 microfarad. And I know that across the entire thing, I have 6 volts. I have 6 volts across it. It's as if it's hooked up to a 6 volt battery. And now I want to know how that split up. So I say this 6 volt battery has 2 microfarads. That's the equivalent of a 3 and a 6. Right? 1 over a third plus a 6 is equal to 2. And that means that this has a charge equal to 12 microcoulombs. Q is equal to C times V, so that's 2 times 6 is 12. That means that each of these has 12 microcoulombs and 12 microcoulombs. And then if I want to know the voltage, voltage is equal to uh, Q divided by C. That's 12 over 3 is 4 volts. 12 over 6 is 2 volts. And so that's the same answers we got before. Uh, make sure that you can do this because sometimes you might get capacitors that aren't so evenly split up that it might not be obvious what the answer is, like when you have a 3 and a 6. And that might not be obvious to you anyway, but it's easier if you're able to do it that way. But, I'm sorry, it's not easier, but it might be necessary for you to do it that way. Okay? All right. You're going to have some problems too about uh, just capacitors, how much charge does a capacitor hold. Remember, this is mostly just plugging in the right equation, that the capacitance is equal to kappa epsilon naught. That permeativity of free space, that's epsilon naught, is on your equation sheet. Kappa would be provided, that's the dielectric constant, is kappa, uh, times A over D, the area over the separation between the plates. In some older tests, I didn't give you the area and or the distance in meters or meters squared, but in the past few years I have been doing that. I, you know how to convert units, right? You know how to convert units? Yeah. You should know how to convert units, so uh, I, I don't usually test for that at this point. So mostly that's just plugging in the right, the right uh, equations. Um, these kind of give people difficulty when you have a capacitor circuit, but there are no numbers in it. So it's useful to be able to, to look at those and figure out what is the voltage or how the voltages are distributed. In this case, I wanted to find the voltage across C1. And so we can redraw it, simplify just a little bit. Uh, I'll call this C. All three capacitors are identical, so I'll just call it C. And then these two capacitors, when they add up, are going to be 2C. So this is just like having, say, a, uh, a 3 microfarad and a 6 microfarad, right? And if you want to put in numbers, that's fine. You can you just put in numbers that fit correctly, so as long as they're proportioned correctly. Uh, but I prefer that you just look at the relationship of the two capacitors to one another and then you can tell me that the voltage across the smaller capacitor which should be the bigger voltage would be across this capacitor that would be what eight volts is right and then this would be four volts okay Okay, yeah, we did a problem similar to this today. This equation is in your, in your, uh, on your equation sheet about terminal voltage. And it looks like this delta V is equal to the EMF minus I times the internal resistance. 
But this is really just an application of the loop rule, that the sum of the potentials around a circuit have to equal to zero, uh, but specifically for internal resistances here. So this is my EMF, 12. This is my current, 2. And then this is my terminal voltage, 10. So it's 10 is equal to 12 minus 2 times R. And so that's going to be 2 times uh, two times 1 ohm. Solving that for R. R is equal to 1 ohm. You'll probably see a problem like that where you have to find the internal resistance or the current or the potential drop, something like that. But you'll have lots of other problems where you have to apply the loop rule. We'll look at some of those. Uh, you'll have problems too like this where you're just finding the resistance of a material or the resistivity of a material. We worked one of these in class and it's kind of like the capacitor problems where you're dealing with the area and the separation uh, where it's mostly just plugging in the right number. So our resistance is rho, that's our resistivity, L over A. And in this case we are looking for rho. I think we worked a problem like this in class. And so to solve for rho, you say rho is equal to RA over L. Uh, I don't have R, so I need to solve for R. R is equal to V over I from Ohm's law. That is 20 over 10. 20 volts over 10 amps, which is 2 ohms. And so that's 2 ohms. A is uh, 10. 10? Oh no, yeah, okay, be careful. Yeah, you gotta be really careful because in these chapters, like it was the same with capacitance and charge, that sometimes the units and the variables have similar similar numbers, similar uh, letters that you use. So remember like with capacitance or with charge, the variable or the units are C for coulombs, and for capacitance, the units were F for farads. So the uh, A is actually the cross-sectional area, it's this value. Be really careful, because people will miss the question for that very reason. And then the length is one meter. I like to go through and just write down the things that I know, where I might write them, write them here, L is equal to one meter, and A is equal to whatever it is. Or if you don't want to go to all that trouble, you can just write L, A, V, I. But it's really helpful on your test to write down those things. And don't just put them in your calculator, but actually write them down, write out the equation. Because many of you will make mistakes just because, not that you didn't know how to do it, but just you you didn't use the right number or you got confused about the units like you just did, right? I mean, you could have missed that on the test. And you know how to do it. It's not that you don't know how to do it. It's just you make a simple mistake. So try to prevent those as much as possible. OK? Uh, and then you solve this for whatever row is. I forget what it was, but it'll be one of these numbers, and then that's the material. Probably have a question like that. And hopefully these are gimme questions. They're really just plugging into the right equation. It's the circuits that really take a lot of thought. Um, Want to look at a resistor circuit? Like one of these? Uh, did we do this one? Oh, we haven't. Oh, yeah. Okay, I did it with a student earlier today. We just did series in parallel. But I think that, yeah, we haven't. Let's do this one then. And uh, what is the equivalent for this circuit? And then you should be able to know what are the voltages or currents in every individual resistor. It's just like with capacitors. With capacitors, you start with the smallest portion that's either parallel or in series. That would be this which is only in parallel, or this, which is only in series. So I'm going to redraw that. That's 2 ohms, 6 ohms, 2 ohms, 1 ohm. And then I'm going to take care of that 2 and 1. And you're probably already seeing some of the, the patterns. If I do the 2 and the 1, that's a 6 and a 3. This is 2 ohms. And then if I do those, 
combine that six and three, I have two two ohm resistors. And then if I combine that, I have four ohms. Okay. And 12 volts across this battery at every case. Now, I can figure out the total current. The total current in this circuit will be V over R. I is equal to V over R. That's from Ohm's law. So the total current through that circuit is 3 amps. Uh, that means that I have 3 amps here and 3 amps here. That means that I can figure out the voltage, although you could probably have figured out the voltage without knowing the current, because I have two identical resistors that each split up the 12 volts. So I know that these both have to have 6 volts each. But when I find the current here, this 3 amps, 3 amps times 2 ohms is 6 volts for both of those. So I have 6 volts here. And then I have 6 volts across this parallel branch. So I have 6 volts each on both of those because resistors in parallel have the same voltage. Then I can step on back. I have 6 volts here. I have 6 volts here. And then this is the tricky part. It's figuring out what are my voltages here. Um, can you reason out what the voltages are? A big resistor has a big or small voltage. It has a big voltage, right. And so the 2 ohm resistor will have a bigger voltage. It's going to be 4 and 2, right. 4 volts and 2 volts. And then that's it. Once I find two quantities on a resistor, I can find any one of the other I can find any one of the other quantities. Oh, I have a good class. All right. Um, can we try number 27? Let's think about number 27. We're going to do this in class probably on Wednesday. Uh, it's in the concept class. So I have five resistors here, and I want to know which one has the largest voltage of those. Uh, so, let me delete this. And I have one, one, three, four, and five, or three and four. Which one has the largest voltage? So, um, oh, shoot. I don't know. Let, let's skip this. We'll come back to this later. We'll, we'll have more in class, so it'll be easier. So let's just skip that one for now. All right. Any particular circuits I want to look at? Do maybe one or two more problems, and we'll move on. Or we'll call it, call it a day. Particular things you want to look at? Sure. Yeah, let me look back at another exam. This is spring 17. Ooh, yeah, this is a good one. Let's take a look at this one. So here on this on this one, I tell you what the voltage is across one of the resistors. I tell you that, that this is 8 volts, and I want to know what is this voltage. Okay? So as with almost every circuit, we're going to just start picking it, start simplifying it and stepping backwards. So I have a redraw it a little bit. I have a one, a four ohm rather. I have a six ohm, a three ohm, and a two ohm. This is six, three, and two ohms. I just simplified that one and two that are in series. And then this is a four ohm. And then a 6, 3, and 2 in parallel. Not sure if y'all remember this. We've done it. But 1 over 3 plus 1 over 2. That is equal to 1, 6 plus 2, 6 plus 3, 6. It's 1 plus 2 plus 3. That's equal to 1. Yeah, 1, 6 plus 2, 6 plus 3, 6 is 6, 6, which is 1. So I have uh, 4 ohms and 1 ohm. And I'm told that this is 8 volts, that means that I have 8 volts across this resistor. And if I have 8 volts across that resistor, um, wasn't it R2? If I 
if I have 8 volts across that resistor, that means that I have a current equal to 8 amps, which means I have a current of 8 amps over here, which means I have a voltage of 32 volts right here. So what's the voltage of the battery? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I could just say, well, I have a 4 ohm resistor. It's 4 times as big, so it's just 4 times 8 is 32. That means the, the voltage of the battery has to be 40 volts. Okay, that one's a little bit different. We'll do some like that on Wednesday, but that's a little bit different than ones we've seen so far. Well, we haven't done any combination circuits, right? But we will on Wednesday and Friday, and then we'll have another help session, too, on Thursday. All right? Um, do one more. Or we'll, we'll do as many as you want, but I want to do at least one more. Let's see, is this one similar? Oh yeah, this one's different. So here I want to know the equivalent resistance, and I want to know the voltage across R5 and the current through R1. So I just want to, let's just try to figure out everything about this circuit. So let's just sort of talk about it for a second. I have a 3, a 3, and a 3 in parallel. That's 1 over a third plus a third plus a third. That's one. So this whole parallel branch has an equivalent of one. And then compare, co combined with the three ohm resistor, the equivalent resistance is going to be four. So the answer to number 17 is four. I'm not going to draw as many circuits. In fact, you probably don't need to draw as many as I do in class once you get practice. But as you're practicing, it's helpful just to draw those circuits. I'm going to draw this one, 12 volts. And then 4 ohms, 12 volts. And then I can start stepping back. Now, I know that this has 3 amps of current. I is equal to V over R. That's 12 over 4, or 3. That means I have 3 amps here and 3 amps here, which means V is equal to I times R. So that's 9 volts and 3 volts. 9 plus 3 equals 12, so I'm OK. Now I can start filling in some numbers that I know right away. I know that's 9 volts. I know this is 3 volts. I know this is 3 volts. And you can probably look at R3 and R4 and tell me pretty quickly what are the voltages. Can you do that? 2 and 1. Which one gets the 2? Right. So I have 2 volts here and 1 volt here. I know that because they have to add up to equal to 3. And uh, R4 is twice that of 1, so it has a voltage twice that of 1. Now, at this point, I can tell you the current or the voltage of any resistor. Because if I want to know the current, I just say V over R. So I have 3 amps, 1 amp. Um, both of these have, well, let's see, this is 1 amp. And then I know this must also have 1 amp. Notice that I have 3 amps here. And I have 1, 1, and 1. So uh, those add up to equal to 3. And then also that these three one amp currents that they all go through the same resistance. If I had a bigger resistance on any one of these branches, it would have a smaller current. But because these resistors are all the same, they all have the same current. Okay? I'm okay stopping there, but if y'all have more questions, I'm willing to, to look at them. Are we good to go? Okay, well, I'll stop. Uh, make sure I got your name before you leave.